So my daughter's playroom has two main problems with it. One, it is extremely messy, and that is mainly caused by the fact that, well, she's two, and there's not much we're gonna do about that. We can clean it up, but by the end of the day, toys are everywhere. That being said, the room is also extremely plain. There is nothing on the walls and just some basic curtains here. Everything is childproof to keep it safe. These rubber stoppers on the corner of basically everything, but nothing's been on the walls. And it's something that's really annoyed my wife and me because we wanted something to be on here, but most of the decorations, as soon as it says kids room, are tripled in price and extremely expensive. One thing we were excited about were these wall letters that said the word play in very simple block letters. They were sheet metal bent over wood and cost about $160 for a set of just four letters. And that was $160 for only four letters. But our girls don't only have one word for this room. They not only say play, but they also say jugar, which is the Spanish word for play, which I already know I butchered the pronunciation of. My wife is the native Spanish speaker, not me, but we want the girls to be bilingual. So including both, there is no Spanish version of that that we could easily find online. Everything that would be on a site that would ship to us right away didn't carry anything in another language. So I turned to my budding woodworking career and my new hobby out in the garage, making things that we couldn't have before. So with some new tools and some new help from a friend, and some new practice and skills that I had not yet taken on, I figured I could make the letters and the wall decoration for the girls, and I could make this room just a little bit more personal. Instead of going with big block letters, we're gonna make it all funky in different fonts, mainly to cover up the fact that I will likely not make pixel perfect block letters. We're also gonna make both the English and Spanish version of these letters, and we're gonna try to do it at about, let's say, $320 total budget, covering both words if we had happened to find a Spanish version that would cost about the same as the English version. So we're gonna recap how successful we were on the whole project at the end of it, but now let's get started. Wow, this car has nowhere to balance, so I'm, I'm literally balancing my camera on the volume knob of my stereo. So having just grabbed a whole bunch of tools for what we're gonna need to be doing, I'm actually pretty excited overall. The idea for this whole project is to take these nice pine wooden panels and then stencil and cut letters in different fonts and as my wife has said, make it funky. So I'm gonna play around with it a little bit. I had spray paint, which is way more expensive than I thought it was actually gonna be, and a couple other tools that I'm going to be unboxing now. Yeah, now. So. Here's our general plan. These are the rough shapes that I want to do for each of the individual letters. I basically need to take these and using some measuring and math and all the things that you say that you're never gonna use in high school, take these and transpose them to these boards so I know how far into each board I need to cut for each letter since these letters are not monospaced. For example, the J is only about half the width of this P, so I don't wanna waste wood. So I'm gonna get each individual letter sketched out and sort of mocked up across all of the boards and see where I can fit them all. And then we're gonna to get to cutting them on the miter saw. And now that we have all the pieces roughly marked out, granted, I know some of the letters are still rough, but the idea here is not to be pixel perfect onto the fonts, but have a general idea and design. I'm very much going with the flow. Now it's time to miter these, well, not miter them, but at least cut them using this sliding miter saw that I have, which is just enough to get through the whole board without needing a table saw, which I still don't yet have somehow. Let's. Set this up and get some cool slow-mo shot. Ah. I have a lot 
kind of a mess. And I'm only like half done because I still have one board left to do. So you might have noticed that I'm cutting and then flipping and then cutting and that turns out because I have about three inches where it's too short. I just measured it and I was off. So thankfully I left a lot of space in between the individual things I need to cut, meaning that each cut can be done safely by cutting, flipping, and then cutting the remaining little bit that's remaining. But it does mean that each cut takes a little bit longer, which is why this is taking a little bit long. And there we go. All of our individual letter blanks that are gonna be turned into both play and hugar. Uh, for the bilingual letter wall decoration board. So I'm super excited to get these out, but that will happen tomorrow when I pull out the jigsaw and the router and get a little bit of help from a friend. So time for sleep. <coughs> okay, so it is letter project day two. I now have each of my individual letter blanks that I'm going to be cutting each of them out on. This one's my J. And I'm doing that with a simple jigsaw, which I forgot to plug in before recording this shot. A simple jigsaw, which I should put up to the wood cutting speed. And I have eye protection and hands because it's cold as hell in here. If I really keep up this YouTube thing, I'm gonna have to heat this garage in some way and probably bring my good camera from downstairs up here. There's probably a snarky note from the editor on that video just then. So let's set up and let's get started. Disaster the second, the replacement J traced backwards, now also split with just the tiniest bit of tension along the grain. Part of me is wondering if I happen to choose something that wasn't really good. This being laminated spruce is the fact that it has such deep grains, why it's breaking so easily, or am I doing something wrong with my cutting on the jigsaw? I'm down to about two letters worth of spare wood and I have two broken letters, which means the rest of this job needs to go relatively flawlessly or I'm making it at worst or at best another trip or two to the big box store at worst. I'm gonna need to rethink the entire project. So this is my idea. This central panel is designed to screw out, A, to support a router to be able to install it, but B, also to just have a gap in the center. Mm -hmm. As long as I'm very careful about not going too far into one of the edges of this area and therefore cutting through my nice brand new work table, I should, should be able to cut here with more support than hanging off of mm -hmm. the edges. That and I need to, I'm getting better with the jigsaw with every cut that I make. So I'm hoping the combination of a more stable work surface and just general practice will make the rest of this go well. So I think for the U, I'm going to, I don't know if, how well you can see that on the time lapse, but this is starting to really shake. So I'm gonna leave these top bits to carve out by hand with a coping saw and with the router table a little bit, but I'm making progress. I have four non-broken letters, which is four more than I had two hours ago. So four to two, two to one on success versus failure, not too bad.
super dramatic moment. So I had two pieces fail. The technically three, the first and second attempt for the J failed and that A, the disaster that struck. I have both of them neatly sketched out on this last piece of scrap wood and it's the last wood I have. Either I do this now or I have to make another trip and extend this project by a week or so because I don't really have time for anything else. So uh, let's see how it goes. Okay, so good news and bad news. Good news is that all of the letters are done and I could not be so happy. That U needs a little bit of manual cleanup, which I will do off camera. Bad news is obviously by you not seeing me finish it, you realize that I didn't have the camera recording for the last bit. I recorded like two seconds of an empty table and that got started. So now my first priority is cleanup because there's quite a bit to do and I gotta get rid of everything here and clean up my tripod and get everything cleaned up and stashed and put away, switch my table into router mode and get these letters finished up, get that U cleaned up and I will do all that now. Okay, so <laughs> small problem. I went to set up my router yesterday. Oh God, that, this is no, no, we're good. I went to set up my router yesterday to be able to route all the edges for the letters that I had carved, come on person. And in doing so, realized that the Ryobi router that I purchased is really only compatible with Ryobi router tables, meaning that the workbench slash router table that I had bought slash uh, just wasn't going to work. So I just returned that and I'm out on an adventure with my daughter and we're gonna go get the new one and potentially another new thing after talking with Cynthia on some things to do for the house. So let's go get that get back to the house, get the corners routed, and get these all prepped for painting. Okay, so now I have a set of nicely cleaned up and routed letters with little chamfered edges just to make sure that there's nothing really out of date. And I've also used my jigsaw and a little bit of sanding to clean up some of the more unfinished and jagged edges just so everything's nice and pretty. I also, last night, put some effort into spray painting and doing some test colors on a few of the different colors that we're planning on painting the letters. We're actually gonna paint all of these colors because why make one decision when you can make four? And it's a really good thing that I did the test fits because the blue can had a bit of a defect at the very beginning. I was just spraying, spraying glops of paint everywhere and it would have ruined one of these, so I'm glad we did it. We're gonna do two coats of each of the paints, and then I have picture hanging hardware, which is on its way in from Amazon, to mount to the backside of any of these so that they can hang nicely on the wall without having to worry about drilling in or splintering or potentially splitting anything. And then we are ready to go. So it's time for a nice little spray paint montage. screwdriver manual because we don't want to use power and a set of our hanger kits which you'll see and then go inside where it is way warmer than out in this room I really need to buy a space heater for the garage and get these installed on the back of our letters so we can get them all ready to hang 
Now I'm using screws, so I don't need to worry about nails going off in random directions. And I'm using a manual screwdriver, so I don't risk these screws exerting too much pressure and splitting the wood along one of the seams. Each letter is probably gonna get one or two hooks. The L, for example, is gonna get one here and one here, because if I just did here, it could potentially lean one direction or the other. And while we aren't exactly installing them all perfectly straight, we still don't want them to sag in ways that we don't intend for. So just a quick little time lapse of what's left and we're almost done with this project. I'm also putting these little rubber feetsies at the bottom of each letter that are the same thickness as this hook at the top, which makes sure that the wall, sorry, the letter will stay flush against the wall instead of having this be more elevated and have the whole thing sort of sit at an angle. This way, it's just a little bit nicer. These are super, super cheap and it's just worth it. Now, each of these letters is actually extremely light, well under a pound, which means a simple nail in the drywall behind me should be more than enough to hold them up. So I don't need to worry about hitting studs for every single one, which means I can hang them with so much space for activities and really go nuts on the design and placement. Time for time-lapse, the final time-lapse of this whole project. I'm really happy with how these turned out. They're not perfect. This A could use a little bit of touch up on the paint. Uh, it's eh, just the littlest bit crooked, but you know what? That's fine. I'm totally fine with that. It reflects the imperfect play of this kid's room. And the room's a disaster anyway, and will continue to be a disaster for the next few years as the girls will proceed to keep their mess hopefully contained to just this space, which tells me that it's fine, it's perfect, and I think it will fit them quite well. This is a huge project and I learned a lot and I put this off far too much. You probably noticed one too many t-shirt changes during the video, but I'm just super happy with how this went. And now she wants to go play, so I'll talk to you all next time.